Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. I'll be sharing with you about Apache Spark uh, .NET. So this is C Sharp API with Spark. And we will look at this from Azure Synapse Analytics, which is an integrated analytics platform within Microsoft Azure Cloud. And it's a place that has quite a few different capabilities pulled together. We're going to focus only on serverless Apache Spark and specifically with the C Sharp API. If you'd like to see this with a different API, such as Scala or Python, which are the more common programming languages to use with Apache Spark, check out one of my other videos. What we'll look at in this demo is using the C Sharp API for Apache Spark and doing a load from Azure Storage and then a bit of transformation, a lookup against uh, some extra like dimension table type of information. And then we'll write back to Azure Data Lake Storage with the Delta format, which is just a really optimized storage format for analytics that works well with Apache Spark and other big data tools. The first thing you'll need to do is go to your Synapse workspace and go to Open Synapse Studio. Now, when I set up this workspace, I created some data lake storage that's connected to it. I also linked a few other services and created a Spark pool. Uh, what you will need to do for the first time if you're trying to do the same demo is link the New York City taxi yellow data. Uh, so I've already have it, have it linked and you'll see it uh, with a name like this if you've got it as well. Otherwise, if you have a brand new workspace and haven't done this yet, you would go to Browse Gallery where you can look through all sorts of data sets to choose from. If you search for NYC, you'll find the New York City taxi options. The yellow trip data is what I'm working with. Click Continue. It'll give you some information about the data set, which is super helpful. So notice that it's in the East US Azure region. You may want to set up your workspace there if you're going to use a lot of uh, data from this data source or others that are stored there. Um, go ahead and click Add Data Set if it's your first time, and that'll get it set up for you. Once you have your data connected, though, we will go to the Develop pane of Synapse Studio. Uh, I already have a notebook, so you don't have to watch me type every single statement. And we're going to load up my .NET uh, notebook. Notice that it's saying Not Started. This means I have no Synapse Pool resources created within my serverless Apache Spark pool. So what I'll do is go ahead and get that, uh, select the right one. Honestly, all of these are really small. Uh, really small pools that I can pick any of them. So we'll just stick with demo one. But if you don't have one yet, go ahead and click manage pools and get that set up. You'll also want to note that I am using .NET Sparks C Sharp, which uh, you'll see this option at the top of every notebook and you can choose between Scala or Python or Spark SQL as well. You can find this notebook on my GitHub at github.com slash data kickstart. Uh, you can see some other examples of C Sharp in particular. If you follow the link at the top of the notebook, let's dive into the code here. Collapse our develop screen, focus in just a little bit. I'm going to start this first cell because it's going to go out and acquire some resources for my Spark pool. This will take probably two and a half minutes, something like that. We'll check the numbers at the end. Let's talk through just a few things on this first cell while my resources start up. So we first import some Spark libraries that we'll need. Then we set some paths. We'll set some source paths and then destination paths. Look for anything that says demo at data kickstart ADLS. That is my specific uh, Azure Data Lake storage information. You'll need to switch it out with yours. Otherwise, you can keep most of this the same. The last thing I want to highlight here is that uh, 15 to 21, I am defining a schema. And so with Spark, we would do a struct type as the data type we use to define a schema. Each item in that schema is a struct field. And you can see names like location ID, borough would be the uh, field name, and then integer type and string type are of course my Spark data types. So this is just getting a few variables prepped and of course kicking off the resources. I mostly do this so that when I run the next cell, you'll be able to get a feel for on my small cluster, not really optimized for what we're doing, how long it takes to run each command. So let's skip forward to where this is completed. Okay, so that first cell's completed. Again, it didn't do a whole lot Spark related, but it did set up some important variables and it took about three minutes to get the resources I need spun up. And so if you're going into these Spark pools and no one's been using them, you'll find that it's about three minute timing to get everything up and running for the first time. Really not too bad in the scheme of things when we're talking about running distributed systems for analytics. Uh, when we move on to cell three, we'll get into some Spark code. This is a pretty simple example. We're just going to read a lookup table and write it down as a Delta format. So my first bit of C-sharp uh, comes in here where I do Spark, the Spark session, 
read and I have a capital R because it's not Python, it's not Scala, and C Sharp are going to have a capital R for all of our methods. Uh, I set some options. I pass in that schema I showed you above. And then I say that this is a CSV file and give it the source path. Note that this, even though this is taxi data, this is actually a lookup table I found, I believe, on the Databricks uh, mounted drive. I don't think it's actually available in the link data set I showed you. So you may have to go out and find this little lookup if you want to do everything exactly like I've done it in this demo. Other than that, though, it's a pretty simple command here for Spark. And so once we've created this data frame, data frame being our, our class that, that is storing our data, and really it's storing kind of the, the path, the query plan of what we're going to do when we, when we run this for the first time. This data frame, uh, we can run dot write, give it the format of delta, which is a very uh, special optimized format that we like to use within Apache Spark. We're going to have, have it overwrite anything we did in the past, and then we'll save to that path that I set up above. And then finally, we can do a show just so that we all see the data as well as uh, write it to disk. Okay, that's completed. Uh, you can see that it took about 40 seconds here and it uh, writes the output for us so that we can take a quick glimpse at this data. All right, so we'll be joined into this data in just a moment. That's the purpose of that cell. Uh, moving on to cell four, which is where the bulk of the work is, we are going to, again, do a read from file. So on line one, we have spark.read. Uh, in this case, instead of providing a schema, we'll just infer schema from the file. And so I'm reading Parquet data, which is another format that's pretty common in big data. And so with Parquet data, the, for, the schema is stored with the file, and we can save a step from defining our own schema there. Uh, as that runs, we have two options to do transformations. Let me uncomment so you can take a look at both. So option A is my preference when I'm not dealing with too much data and not doing too many transformations. So option A is I take that, that data frame, so that, that class that I created that has the data I just read, and I apply with column statements. So I'm basically uh, processing a column at a time, or at least defining my processing a column at a time. And I will, in this case, have an output field of year month, that's the first parameter, and then I can give it some uh, SQL functions that, that will run. And so in this case, the COL is specifying a column within the data frame, so the pickup date time, Substring will do what you would expect if you've been around programming a bit. I'm gonna grab the first to the seventh character, and then I'll do a replacement of my dashes with underscores. Really what we're doing with year month is getting a year underscore month number string that we can use for partitioning, which is a very important concept in uh, data systems. Now, in addition, I'll do a couple of date transformations in line nine and 10, and then on line 11, we calculate a tip percentage just by doing a simple divide. So hopefully, uh, if you've programmed in a few different languages by now, hopefully this syntax is fairly readable. It's something you can dig deeper in uh, outside of this demo. But I want to show you that there's also a way to do this that looks, it looks a little bit more like SQL. Um, you can actually just call spark.sql and do a whole lot of things with pure, C, pure SQL statements. Um, but what I want to do here is show you a way that it just performs a little better than the with column. And so I can take my data frame if I didn't do any of this stuff and call it in option A. So pretending I didn't do option A, I can come down to option B and do select expression, return every column that I had, which automatically is included in option A when I do with column. And then I can apply these functions really just as these expressions. And so I'm still doing a, re a replace and instead of substring, I used left and I'm still calling it year month. Uh, I can run two date transformations. I can do uh, tip percentage calculations. The dollar sign here, by the way, is a C-sharp thing to say that I'm going to replace part of my string with a variable called date format. And so this will give me the exact same output as option A, but it'll do it kind of all in one step rather than the width column will have a different projection for each, each width column. And so it can add up over time if you have a lot of those in your jobs. For this simple job though, you can do it either way. Now on line 21, we are just reading back in that simple lookup table we did at, uh, on the cell above. And then on line 24 to 29 here, let's zoom in just a bit, we are doing a join. And so we take our trip, our transform data frame and we join to the zone data frame on the pickup location ID is equal to location ID. Uh, we're doing a left join and then we're dropping that extra location ID field so we don't have extras of those. We're renaming a couple columns just to make sure our column naming is uh, more clear. 
And then at the bottom here, we do overwrite. So our resulting data frame from the join, we do a write with overwrite mode, partition by year month. So this will give us better read performance later. We can filter on just one year month at a time, save it as a Delta format and uh, pass it a path, which was set up in the first cell. So that is a simple job that uses spark.net. I'll go ahead and run this and we can look at the time once it's done. This one's gonna take a little bit. As that's running, let's take a quick view at monitoring here. Uh, the main way I would do this is just expand the job execution and take a look at the items here. Uh, I can see I've let it run for a little bit already. So you can see some completions and see that the uh, save is still in progress and we've got about nine tasks it's going to churn through to get that done. The other ways of monitoring is you can open the Spark UI, which will be what you're used to seeing if you've worked with Spark a lot, or you can go to the monitoring page of Synapse. And so here you have the actual logs, which can be pretty useful to search, standard error, standard outer there. You can pull that down and take a look at this visual map of the different stages that are running, uh, view details of a single stage, a lot there to explore and decide how you prefer to monitor your jobs in, jobs in Synapse. Uh, and then this is a glimpse at the Spark UI that you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, this is what you'd be seeing in pretty much any Spark environment that you use. Back to our notebook to see if we are done. Not quite yet, so let's fast forward to when this step is completed. Okay, so that job completed in five minutes and 30 seconds. Let's collapse our view again after we browse around. And the final thing I'll show you just real quick is how we could read that file back in and uh, do a quick select of the top uh, 20 or so records and just confirm that we have some data that was written. So there we go. Once we've stored it in Delta format, it really doesn't take that long to read back in, 12 seconds here, not quite as fast as if you're using um, Synapse dedicated pools, uh, probably serverless SQL would be faster in this as well, but it's performant enough for analytics, especially on a, a larger data set such as this one. Well, that's a wrap on this video. Thanks for joining. I'll see you next time.